Uh, hi everyone and welcome to my video for trying to strip down this uh, Kalkoff, uh, I think it's an Impulse 2 motor uh, from my uh, Kalkoff electric bike. Um, I've had a go, at, I've swapped one of these before for a new one, uh, now I've got another one that's died so I thought I'd have a go at taking it apart to see uh, if it can actually be repaired. So, um, previous experience tells me this part is the motor I don't think the motor is the problem, I think it's something to do with the gears and everything. So I'm going to start by seeing if I can separate the uh, body down all of these. Uh, that's using a series of torques. Uh, and I've got my torques 20, well, that's torques 15, torques 25 I think I need for that. Some of the screws are longer than others, so where the housing is thicker there and thinner there, although they look the same, they're different length screws, so I've just marked them up with a little blob of paint so I can sort that when I get back together. Right, I think before it'll come apart I'm going to have to uh, take this circlip off to get this piece off before that housing will come out. Um, it's not really a proper circlip, but I'm going to have a go with circlip pliers, see if that will do it. Okay, and that's coming off on the splines now, and I can see a bear in there. The problem I've had is that, um, first of all, I was just making a bit of a shushy noise as I was driving along and cycling along. Um, I thought maybe it was a worn chain. Replace the worn chain, still no change. Oh, I've missed a... There's another one there, hold on. Um, so, so, yeah, changing the chain didn't do it. Um, and then it started doing this banging, clacking, crunching, jumping thing, which I, I've heard about before in Kalkoffs. Uh, is that a short or a long one? That's maybe even different again. Anyway, do that separate. That's, a, that's another short one. Um, so that's why I thought I'd try and see if maybe it is a bearing. There is a bearing there. Right, does that want to come apart? Right, I think I'm going to use, um, as Haynes used to say, tap gently with a hide face mallet. Yes, there we are, gently does it. Okay. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, so a few things here. Right, so this is like some kind of main bearing and that's the ratchet thing that lets you freewheel the pedals um, while the motor's still driving the duty. So um, that bearing feels okay. Those ratchet teeth don't look too bad. This is the drive from the motor That, that's got some kind of ratchet on it as well, but I can't feel too much play in that, and I think that's not too bad. Where there is play is in this one, that's like a spindle, um, what do you call it, um, needle bearing. Um, you know, I can feel play on that on the shaft. Let's see if you end a bit. I can feel a bit of play on that on the shaft. I mean, I know it's only a needle bearing, but I wonder if that might be worth replacing. And then, these pull teeth, they click down. They don't always, no, that's not jump back up. Now it has, a few seconds later. Again, that one's not jumped back up. So I wonder if that banging thing that I'm experiencing is when these aren't jumping back up and re-engaging with these teeth in here. So I might explore that a bit further. 
I guess that's some kind of a spring. Yeah, there's some clever spring clip thing there. It looks like it's there. Just not very, not enough ump to make it jump up. Whether that's just because these have got a bit sticky, or the spring has lost some spring, or both. I'll have a look at that. I uh, don't know if you can see this, but looking at the little pool thing, I am going to get it to focus that close. Uh, it's not too clever. Um, that's the bit that's supposed to bear, and it's not a great colour. Uh, and similar inside uh, the thing where it runs, not a great colour. Um, that's the spring clip that's come out. Hold them in. It's sort of all right, but not great. Um, I might see if there's anything I can do about that. But certainly, I could uh, clean those slots, clean those bit on the pole, lubricate them. Maybe with something fairly light. It's in there. It's almost like the. Um, I'll zoom in. Can I do it? So in here, it's almost like. Uh, can you see that? It's almost like the grease has turned to glue. Uh, maybe not a good thing. So it might be enough if I just give that a really good clean out um, on both the pole and the bed there where it goes in and see if that makes it move better. Okay, not sure how well you can see that, but that's uh, before and after cleaning. Uh, just cleaned it with metal and rag, that's all. But can you see that's got that, you know how grease sometimes goes sort of sticky? That's what that is. Uh, and that's the same piece just cleaned up again. So I'm going to clean them both up. Uh, similar thing with the slots that they run in. Uh, clean them up and then see what it, put the spring back on and see if that's any different. Well, I can't see a part number or anything on this needle roller bearing, so I'm just going to try and measure it uh, with the verniers. Okay, so that's uh, cleaned the slots and cleaned the little pools. So I'm going to lubricate them, but rather than use um, grease again, I'm just going to give them a tiny dot of just ordinary engine oil. Um, that, I mean, grease lasts longer, but this will probably last long enough for this job. I think it only needs about one dot, uh, one drop. Um, and I've also. Let me do that. There we go. I've also cleaned out this slot that the spring runs in, um, in case that was preventing the spring from doing its thing. Uh, how do I get this back together? Clean gloves. Pull on there. <laughs> Obviously now those two. Right, let's give it the test, see if it sits down. Well that seems to be springing up quite nicely to me. Straight away. Right, that's certainly a change to what we had before. Right, I think that's okay. Um, and I think, if I remember, yeah, I'm sure the end of the spring was in there. I think it was actually more like that with the end up to there so it couldn't move. Okay. 
well that's looking a bit more like a properly up, up acting pool to work in these. While I'm here I might give them a bit of a clean up as well. Okay, well the new bearing has arrived, so um, I'm going to put that onto the shaft. It doesn't feel massively different to the old one, to be honest, in terms of play, but hey, while I've got the thing apart, I might as well do that. Um, didn't find any grease on the old one uh, when I took it out, so I'm just going to put a bit of oil on. Um, see if that's enough lubrication, particularly given that problem that I had with the um, with the grease going a bit funny and sticky. These fenders are still looking alright. Just bring it about okay. Doot, doot, doot. Um, okay, so it ought to be straightforward. Oh, I redistributed the grease that was left as well. I guess I could have re-greased it, but there was still quite a lot of decent yellow grease round here, just in the wrong places. So I've just moved that and put it around there, giving it a bit of a clean in there. So just going to try it and hope for the best. So let's put this fella back together. So the gasket. This motor has got more, a bigger number of connectors on it than the previous one I did. Um, maybe because this one has like a, a display that's got more functions on it, so it needs to get more sensors from the thing. So all these little fellas, I just marked them up with a letter on both sides. Uh, these are the main ones, they're colour coded, and the thing that they go on to is colour colour coded as well so that's not too bad um, it's just the ones like these so I put different marks on them on each side so I can get them back in the right place um, this red one never has anything in it I wonder if that is some kind of speed restrictor or something or whether you could take that out but I've never actually tried that I did once correspond with a the main Kalkoff guy in Loughborough but he didn't want to let me know what uh, what that did not to worry it goes quite enough and fast enough for me anyway so I'm just going to nip all these up now pretty tight since I'm only using a hand thing and then it's ready to try it on the bike so um, I'll try and leave a message on the end of this about whether it worked or not but thank you for watching I uh, hope that's been of some interest. Um, I need to put this circle back on. Okay, so uh, next thing I've got to do is put the circlet back on. Line that fella up on the splines. With a bit of luck, it might go back on a bit easier than it came off. So that's on, and yeah, nice ratcheting sound, nice driving sound, yeah, can't catch it out either, so I think we've got it, I'll put it back together and um, try and let you know whether it worked or not.